Good happy Sunday morning, July 1st, 2018. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First up, mother of man shot by Nashua police says she's in shock. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Tim Callery. Pauline Contreras says her son Justin wouldn't hurt a fly, which is why she and her family are just confused as to why he was shot twice by police. Okay, you know, I, I, I was just in shock. I'm like, what do you mean he's been shot? Pauline Contreras tells us about her reaction to hearing her son was shot by an officer. We're just in shock because Justin is very respectful to the police. He is. He's a very respectful guy. Pauline talked with her 29-year-old son Tuesday. She says Justin seemed stressed and depressed over his job situation, especially because he has children to take care of. Out of concern, she asked Nashua police to conduct a wellness check, a request she's made before. But Pauline says she never expected it would lead to her son in the ICU. They had removed the bullet, bullet um, from his chest in the ICU. The other bullet that went through his arm, um, it was a through and through. He's still in the hospital. Colleen has had a chance to speak with him, and her son says he heard someone pounding on his side door, but didn't know who it was. So he grabbed a broken gun to scare away who he thought may have been an intruder. As her son continues to heal, Colleen is hoping more answers will come to light as the investigation continues. Of course, we want to get more questions answered, but, you know, God only knows what's going to happen next. And the Attorney General's office says it currently has no comment and does not anticipate any new information. It will, however, release a full detailed report once its investigation is complete. Meantime, Pauline says Justin does have a license to carry. Live in the studio, I'm Tim Callery, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Deadly double shooting in Bridgeton under investigation. Let's take a listen to the video from WCVB Boston. crime scene tape is rarely seen in this section of Brighton near Oak Square, but this is what residents on Faneuil and Brackett Streets woke up to Saturday morning after a deadly double shooting just before 1 a.m. I need the shot. I need eight shots. When officers arrived, they found two shooting victims, both men in their 20s, lying in the street. Our arrival found two people shot. Uh, uh, you know, they were declared deceased on the scene. Right now, police don't have a motive for the shooting. But witnesses told officers they heard people arguing before shots were fired. I think this one here was targeted towards these two victims. The neighborhood, which is filled with college students and families, hoping police will make an arrest quickly to restore peace in the neighborhood and so the victims' families can get justice. Of course I am afraid. Everybody's afraid now, you know. I think the Brighton's a little more, you know, kind of reserved, taken away from the city, a little more reserved, a little more, you know, quiet. Um, that's kind of what attracted me to it, so... Uh, didn't see much of that myself. 
And so far, Boston police have not identified those two shooting victims. Anyone with information is urged to contact police. And a reminder, you can remain anonymous. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Chesterville crash victim flown to hospital. A Chesterville man was taken to a hospital then flown to another after a crash in Wilkin Friday afternoon. Wilkin police said Bruce Hall, 32, was driving his motorcycle on Route 2 at the time of the crash. The road was closed for more than an hour. The crash remains under investigation. Marchers around the nation protest zero-tolerance immigration policy. Let's take a listen to the video from ABC News. The white protest against the president's immigration policy. Tens of thousands of protesters in more than 700 demonstrations like this one in Chicago, in cities and towns from coast to coast, in every state, urging President Trump to reunite the families separated at the southern border, part of the fallout from his zero-tolerance immigration policy. We start with ABC's Kenneth Moten in Washington, D.C. Tonight, a resounding chorus from coast to coast. Tens of thousands of people demanding an end to President Trump's zero-tolerance immigration policy that at one point resulted in the separation of families at the border. They rallied in the nation's capital. I understand rules, I understand process, I understand all that, but this is what it's doing. Marks across the Brooklyn Bridge, Phil Plaza's in Boston, Chicago, and Los Angeles, holding signs that read, close the detention centers, and children don't belong in cages. This young girl's handwritten message simply says, families belong together. More than 700 marches in every state. Demonstrators join forces with celebrities. We are out here to save the soul of our nation. And politicians. <laughs> President Trump signed an executive order to stop the separations, but more than 2,000 children still haven't been reunited with their parents. This seven-year-old from El Salvador separated from his mother for a month reunited just yesterday in Virginia. Our Tom Yamas at the border this week asked the head of Customs and Border Protection about the legal back and forth and the public pressure. At this point now, where we were separating families and the executive order came out and we're keeping families together, do you think it would have been worth it? Should they have never separated families from the get-go? I think we have to adjust to changing conditions in, in both the border flow and in terms of the public trust environment. As law enforcement, one of the foundations is you have to have the trust of the public. A California judge stepped in this week, ordering the administration to reunite families within 30 days. Children five and under, two weeks. Kenneth Lowe joins us now live from Washington. And Kenneth, today the president doubling down once again on how he wants to secure the border and due process. That's right, Tom. President Trump on Twitter today said, when people come into our country illegally, we must immediately escort them back out without going through years of legal maneuvering. Remember, the White House said this week, just because illegal immigrants don't see a judge doesn't mean they don't receive due process. The pressure is also on Congress, but lawmakers left Washington for the holidays, failing to pass any legislation to fix the immigration problem. Tom? Kenneth, welcome to us tonight from Washington. Kenneth, thank you. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. 
and I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone.